Okay. Um, we're, we just came from a meeting with uh, San Francisco Supervisor Malia Cohen, District 10, and I'm talking with Misha Irizari. This is March 1st, 2011, Tuesday. Uh, we were talking to Malia Cohen about tasers. And Misha is going to talk a little bit first, uh, introductory statements about what types of tasers there are. She's done a lot of work on this. What types of tasers there are and why they've suddenly become so popular as an alternative to the use of guns. Um, so, uh, Misha, take it away. Tasers are basically direct energy weapons where they can, there are different type of tasers, that one that can be applied directly to the skin that deliver electric current. There are others that can project copper prongs up to uh, 125 feet and that also co uh, conduct electric current. And there are also the taser guns that you have seen that are used now by the U.S. Army that can deliver up to 600 prongs at the same time. Now, this is to uh, multiple people or to... Yes, that would be, that could be used under civilian, that could be used under other armies, and that could also be used in riot control. Yeah. Uh, the, the taser that we are more familiar with here in the United States are the ones that are directly applied to the skin or the ones that deliver the two copper prongs. Both deliver 50,000 volts of electric current. If you multiply that charge by five, what do you obtain? You what? know? What? No, I don't know. The electric chair charge. On the, at, at, in the desk chamber. So you can imagine when you put your fingers on a faulty cord or lamp and you catch 110 current nice. in your fingers, you know how painful and, and unpleasant that is? Imagine 50,000 volts go into your body. It uh, immobilizes the body, it freezes, it cramps all muscles, and the person collapses. Uh, the pain usually subsides after about 10 to 15 seconds, but after the person uh, regains muscle control, they often remain dazed and frightened and, and uh, confused. Is this, this reminds me a little bit about uh, a like the same thing as electroshock therapy? Yes, it is. Is it the it, same thing? It's the same thing. It's the, the electric parts that I use on cattle to control them when you send them to the slaughterhouse. And I like your comparison yeah. with um, a loose wire on a plug. Exactly. This is so much more exactly. than that. And also, it's a mean of control and power. People who are tasered are frightened. When it's used on people with mental health issues, you can understand what kind of mental health issues problem they may have after if they have already have hallucinatory uh, problems after being shocked. Excuse me? We're, oh. we're doing a video. Oh, okay. Um, and unfortunately, over 90% of taser incidents have occurred towards people with mental health issues in the nation. Actually, over 500 people have died in America, that, that includes Canada, mm -hmm. since 2001, since Taser International, which is the main manufacturer, started lending contract to his public, uh, police department and sheriff department all across the nation. Now, we had a hearing with the police commission on tasers last yes. week, uh, and one of the uh, people who talked in public comment uh, announced that he had epilepsy. Yes. How could this affect somebody with epilepsy, for example? It would probably create a shock wave in his brain that would kill him instantly. It was also Paul Quick, who is a doctor who has been a paramedic for over 10 years, also has a heart condition. And he testified that if he was tasered, 
his heart would probably go into arrhythmia or defibrillation, and he would die from the tasering. And this is a doctor? It's a doctor. Or someone who understands. John Burton came to testify from LA also about the extreme cardiac risk that is incurred to tasering. And the police, as police authorities across the nation have invented a bogus non-medical diagnosis that is called excited delirium. And the way that I explain excited delirium is that the subject that usually is mentally ill or would be under the influence of a drug, would it be prescription of speed or coke, when they are tasered would experience a surge of adrenaline and epiphadrine that is not caused by the taser but by their own mentation or drugs. And that that surge would make them drop dead instantly. My question now is, we know that the police, to force of science, police.com, admit that 25% of the police on the force in patrol, big cops, admit to have at least, 25% of them, admit to have at least used or dealt anabolic steroids at least at some point in their career. When those huge bastards, excuse me, who are already in the face and crazed under the influence of steroid, are tasering someone. Given the huge surge of adrenaline and epiphedrine in the body during steroid intoxication, how come they don't drop dead alongside their tasered victim as also falling under the diagnosis of excited delirium? So what's good for the goose, which is justified tasering of a dangerous subject is not good for the gander who died of excited delirium. Can you talk about um, <laughs> the teenage girl that was tasered and the baby that was tasered? Yeah. Uh, this is, this is a, a, a use of tasers in place of guns yeah. and and it's becoming very popular now yeah. to do this because this is new technology partly. Three weeks ago in North Dakota uh, a three years old was tasered by uh, I don't remember the name of the town but by uh, 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 school police because the child refused to have his temperature taken by the nurse at the school infirmary and walked out of the building. So he was considered as defiant and disobedient, and the, the school police tasered the child. So the child is injured, and there is now a three-year-old baby. Yeah. So there's a lawsuit, and there's also a 14-year-old teenager uh, who had uh, to have 14 stitches in her brain after being tasered her directly skull. to her skull by the police, and that child already had ADD, she had attention deficit disorder. So she's experiencing now post-traumatic stress disorder and ADD as the result of the tasering and she's much worse. Now you uh, were courageous and allowed yourself to be tasered. Um, what, were the, what was the end result of that? And well, how did it feel? Tell well, us about it. It was in control condition. The cops were not yelling at me. They had told me what could possibly happen to me. Uh, they say, we're gonna catch your fall, don't worry, you won't get hurt. You may lose uh, control of your bowels or your, your uh, right. urine, uh, and you may curse, which is customary. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna shoot you in your hip, so start walking and we're gonna shoot you in your hip with the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So they shot me in the hip, uh, the pain was excruciating, I, they didn't have time to, to catch me, I fell. And one of them, I was bleeding actually through my jeans, and uh, one of the prong got uh, stuck into my sciatic nerve in the back of my right thigh, and the other prong damaged the conjunctive tissue between my femur, right femur and the pelvic bone, which is the reason why you see me walking with a cane since 2005. Wow. because it has altered my balance and aggravated diabetic neuropathy in my leg. I know it might sound stupid that I volunteer to be tasered, but 
being the sole provider of direct services uh, around police accountability to survivors and grieving families in San Francisco, I definitely wanted to know what mm -hmm. our uh, a client may potentially go to. Mm -hmm. And Taser International had called my agency to do a promo because they wanted us to support them trying to land a contract with SFPD. That happened in 2004. And that's how we were able to defeat the contract the first time around. Because we got together uh, ACLU, Elo Baker Center, my agency, and we defeated it. Mm -hmm. Now it was reintroduced by George Dascon. Okay, did but that's do you, another are you, story. Yeah, that's another story. Are you? Do you think that you're allowing yourself to be tasered played a part in um, in us defeating it the first time around? Yeah, definitely. Okay, thank definitely. you, Misha. That that yes. was a cautionary tale. That <laughs> for sure. Don't volunteer for tasering. Okay. You can avoid it. Well. <laughs> but they tell you it's going to be safe. How yeah, it's going to be fine. How do you know?